Elise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. And welcome to live video coaching today. We are talking about emotionally safe people, how to spot them, how to spot if someone is not one. Let's talk about a few of the things you might notice. So I guess the opposite of a red flag, whatever that would be. Um, they listen to you and you feel heard. So you're talking to someone and you feel heard, not in a way where they're trying to get information out of you, but in a way where you feel like they're reciprocal communication going back and forth and you feel heard, you feel like you hear them. So that's one way. Um, you feel validated. You feel like what you're saying is actually being listened to, heard, and then they're able to repeat back to you in a way that allows you to feel validated. They are people who can assert their own boundaries and they also respect yours. So if someone says no to you, if someone, you know, in a, if someone is able to assert a boundary and you can kind of sense that maybe it's not something you wanted to hear or something, maybe, you know, you have a feeling, oh, that's that person's, that's the line they've drawn. And they're able, they know what their boundaries are. They're able to assert them. But at the same time, if you assert yours, they respect them. It's people who are emotionally safe want you to grow. They want you to experience your own life. They want you to um, keep growing, evolving, changing. They are there for you. They, they don't knock you down when you have a success. They celebrate your successes. They sit beside you when you're having harder days. They don't invalidate you when you're having a hard time. And their aim is for you to succeed along with them succeeding. So they, they're positive in their own life as well and with their own successes. They don't brag about them, but they share them. Does that make sense? They let you talk and vent if you need to, and they stay neutral. They don't have to get into your drama. They don't take on your um, negativity when you have it. They just sort of let you be there and let you have the experience you need to have and vent what you need to vent. And then maybe they talk to you about it after, but they don't sit and like get all riled up with you and, and, and you know, create more drama for you. They let you just have your experience. They are patient. Emotionally safe people are patient with you. Um, they, they make you feel patient as well. Okay. There's not this hurried anxiety about them. Emotionally safe people are non-judgmental. So while they may have opinions and why they may be able to be judging, they are non-judgmental. They're not crit critical of you for the things that you do that are imperfect. They perhaps might point out things to you if they need to be pointed out, but they can do so in a way that is, doesn't make you feel judged. Okay. You might feel like, oh, they see something I need to work on. Great. And, you know, if you ask, they may tell you, but they're not going to be judgmental of you and critical. So you don't have that feeling. Or if you do have that feeling, and you know, that's your feeling that you feel judged all the time, then that's something to work on so that you can learn to see whether someone's being judgmental or just helping you out, right? They keep their word. They don't future fake, right? They tell you something. And if they do need to change plans, there's legitimate reasons. They are compassionate, and they have empathy. So not just towards you, but toward other people, toward other things in the world that you can, you can sense their compassion and empathy. They, they communicate truth in an honest and clear way. So if they need to tell you something and it is a truth, they can communicate it in a way that's clear and honest without being offensive and rude and critical and judging, right? Judgmental rather. Um, they're okay with silence. They don't need constant talking. They can hang out and just be quiet, but they don't need to be quiet in order to hang out. Does that make sense? They're okay in the silence, in the in the calmer moments. Um, Mo Cowboy had a great thing. Let's repeat what he said because he, what he said was lovely. He said, safe people listen with reciprocity. Allow me to speak my truth and listen as they speak. And, and I listen as they speak theirs. Yes, and they speak it openly. So they're people that know what they need and they know how to um, how to set a boundary with with the world and you and they respect the ones you set okay they don't take your difficulties personal if you're having a day okay and you're just talking about your difficulties they don't then think they don't then take it personal like you're talking about them right? If you're in a grouchy mood and you're making a face, they don't assume that face is about them. Okay. It's not emotionally safe for someone if, and we all do this to a degree, but an emotionally safe person knows, can, can discern and 
will more often ask, are you okay? Rather than assuming it's about them. Does that make sense? Or they'll say, did I do something? Then, then, you know, that the person is actually seeing an expression on your face and asking if there's something they can do about it or did did they do something? So rather than just taking it personal, getting mad at you, walking away, keep holding it in, talking about talking to behind your back, whatever it is. Okay. Those are some of the things that I came up with here for emotionally safe people. We'll talk about flags for emotionally unsafe people. Okay. We, we know the narc red flags, right? We could go over them all. So unsafe people, they don't admit um, to any faults or flaws. Unsafe people are defensive. Their nature of the way they face, they come into any relationship is a defensive nature. You have the slightest disagreement and the disagreement becomes defensive on their part before you even have a chance to um, make a point. Uh, Self-righteous. We can be self-righteous in a way where where it's not toxic. And then there's self-righteousness where everything they say is right and, and their opinion, it, more than anything, if you think of it in an opinion way, their opinion's what matters above all else, okay? Empty apologies. So they may, all right, sorry, you know, oh, I'm sorry that, you know, that like with Emily was talking about, oh, I'm sorry, I just got upset about that. But then two minutes later, they get upset about the same thing. So it's not really an apology. It's more of a um, smooth in the waters till they can do it again kind of thing. Um, flattery. Well, we know love bombing, but flattery that's shallow. I mean, someone that's t- that is emotionally not safe does not necessarily mean a narc they can be just emotionally not safe for you and flattery that is super shallow a compliment is one thing and this is i think hard for us because and why most of us don't like compliments it's because first of all we've been love bombed and second of all we've had flattery that's shallow from unsafe people and a compliment is a real genuine appreciation someone else has for something you've done, who you are, what you look like. I mean, it can be anything, right? It could be, that's a really cute dress or that color looks lovely on you. And that can be a real compliment, but there's a shallowness. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? When you feel that flattery, that's shallow, that's an unsafe person because it basically is saying, I'm going to feed you this so that you feed me back something, right? They demand trust. They don't wait to earn it. Somebody that can't, they want to give you a bunch of their stuff. You set a boundary. They flip out. They get all defensive. So they're red flag number one. And then they demand you trust. They demand you trust them. So they want information back or they, you know, it's, it's a big red flag. Not, not waiting for the trust to be earned. Okay. Um, they do cross boundaries. We kind of talked about that. They cross boundaries. They step on boundaries. They push through boundaries. They create their own boundaries instead, <laughs> right? Lies. They lie. They lie. And you catch them and they lie and they lie some more. Okay. And here's a big one. There's no personal growth. Not only do they not grow personally, if you know them over time, they're not um, evolving. They're not working on themselves in a way. Not everyone has to be doing this stuff we're doing, right? But most People who are healthy are trying to attain things in their life that better their lives. They're not just sitting, doing the same thing over and over again and not evolving at all, right? And then if you have personal growth, they shoot you down. They get judgmental. They um, they do all kinds of things to make you feel like any positive move you've made is worthless. Narcs or toxic people, as Mel Cowboy, get angry and defensive when confronted with a differing perspective or truth. Exactly. They get angry and defensive. So that's a way to spot an emotionally unsafe person, no matter what you want to call them. You know, the point is, after toxic abuse, we don't need people that in our lives they're going to cross any of these boundaries, whether they are narcs or not, right? We need people that are positive and um, it's just a waste of time, right? To have people that you can't trust emotionally. And not to say people, everyone in your life has to be the most emotionally safe and available person. Now you can have levels of friends, but the people you let in close, they they definitely should be, especially if you are a survivor of abuse. Because um, first of all, it's harder to see for us, harder to see the masks, So we have to be careful. And second of all, we've had enough, right? We need to heal. 
we need to heal and get on into evolving our lives, right? You guys take care and see you next time. Bye-bye. Anyone watching, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like. Say hello. Leave comments. All that good stuff. Bye-bye.